welcome back. And before we dive into this amazing conversation, don't forget to follow me on Spotify and please leave five stars because it really helps me to build my audience. So if you have done that, thank you so much and let's go to the episode. Enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Unapologetically Joy. My name is Joy, I'm the host of this podcast and today we got another special guest and that is Michiel. And Michiel is a coach and the owner of Fuse Training and Coaching, where he helps young people and young adults in their personal development through boxing coaching. So welcome Michiel. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> very excited to be here. Nice. Yes. And I was really curious about your story. And I was wondering, um, what inspired you to become a boxing coach? Um, what inspired me? Um, well, first of all, a couple of events. Um, but also just my passion for boxing, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but there were like two uh, important events. One event was when I was working in a juvenile prison. Mm -hmm. uh, where I really uh, figured out that boxing was a way to reach the... Um, we were not allowed to say prisoners or inmates because we had to treat them like uh, yeah, children. Mm -hmm. uh, inmates would, would be too rough to say, so we would have to say children. So to really connect with those children, I would go to the dojo and uh, we would do some boxing that worked much better than just talking. So that's where I... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I found out the, the magic of boxing. Um, and another event was with my girlfriend. I, uh, when I just met her, um, we did some boxing in the park in Rotterdam, in uh, Froese Park. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I figured out that, uh, or, or, or I noticed that there were some emotions coming up um, in my girlfriend when she, when she was boxing. and. Um, yeah, that was for me really uh, an eye-opener, like, okay, moving like this, being physical, close to another person. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also about uh, inflicting pain to someone, um, setting your boundaries. Uh, I thought it, it was a beautiful a way, also a metaphor uh, that could be used yeah, in, in, to, to, to help people develop on a personal uh, level. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why uh, where I decided uh, like I need to I need to to combine these th these two things, and that's when I went uh, googling box coaching. So I would call you said boxing coaching, which is the right translation. Um, but for me, um, yeah, I, I don't think it, it it really sounds well, you know, like boxing coaching. So okay. uh, we decided to call it box coaching. Oh, okay. Yeah. In Dutch, you would also say box coaching. Uh, but in English, we would say like with a B O X and then coaching because it just sounds a little uh, yeah, fancier, you know? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's only boxing, maybe. Yeah. And yeah. if you are doing boxing, uh, you're, you're really trying to learn a new ability, uh, right? To, to, you learn how to, to fight. Uh, but where box coaching, boxing is really used as a tool in order to uh, yeah, get to know mm -hmm. your behavior more and connect with your body. Mm hmm. Really good. Yeah. And you're from Rotterdam. Yeah. And now you live in Spain. Now I live in Spain. Yeah. How do you, um, yeah, what decided you to come here? Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cheesy. So cheesy, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's a big reason. Um, but I'm also pretty adventurous, if I may say so, myself. I've also lived in Colombia before uh, for one and a half years. When I was 27, I went on a trip to South America um, and then I uh, decided to stay in Colombia. So uh, I worked as an English teacher there. So yeah, I, I also fell in love with like the Spanish culture, the Spanish language. So that was, um, I also knew how it was to, to, to live abroad, to live in a Spanish culture. Um, so when my girlfriend moved to Spain, um, yeah, we, we've had a long distance relationship for one year. Um, but then, yeah, I decided to, uh, to go after her because yeah, I, I thought it was a, it was a beautiful uh, challenge 
and also i because i was here like once every two, two months i think yeah once every two months and i i also fell in love with the andalusia so uh, mm -hmm. close to the beach nice weather nice people nice food so yeah the choice was made uh, pretty mm -hmm. fast really nice and did you also come from an adventurous family Mm, good question. Uh, yeah, I think my my father was. Yeah, my father also. Uh, he was a um, geologist, um, and he always wanted to live in Norway oh, okay. because you have like beautiful mountains, and it was for his work. It was perfect, and he liked the cold as well. So he lived there for a while uh, with his um, uh, not my mom, but his uh, previous uh, uh, wife. Uh, and his children. He lived there, um, and he he wanted to stay there, but his uh, his wife didn't want, so um, he had to move back. So he's pretty adventurous, yes. And my mom too, but not in the way of like moving to another country or. Mm -hmm. But she she's not afraid for a, for a new challenge or for what's new, you know. Okay. She's a coach herself, so oh, she nice. yeah she likes to kind of indulge their their self with. Uh, like yeah being in an uncomfortable situation you know? i mean mm -hmm. that's i think part of being a coach you should make that a habit yeah that's true yeah and what kind of coach is your mother so she works for uh, healthcare organizations where um yeah so she works with a lot of um, um how do you say that like nurses and stuff mm -hmm. Um, and she tries to uh, make sure those teams work together, like oh, properly, okay. you know. Okay. I mean, also in Corona times, it was there were a lot of traumatized people, for example, mm -hmm. and that uh, influences also the beha your behavior on the work floor, you know. So people get tough, mm -hmm. uh, people don't communicate as well anymore. So yeah, that's where a coach uh, comes in very handy, you know, like yeah. putting the finger on the on the on the the sore spot <laughs> yes and um actually i want to say c instead of corona because otherwise maybe we get banned oh really but, yeah okay. but it doesn't matter yeah. i didn't say that but c. um how was that period for you when c happened how that period was yeah for me? yeah um so I worked in uh, in healthcare myself as a, like a supervisor, like a mm -hmm. guide of um, uh, people with uh, behavioral problems and antisocial characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, so so I would be working in a group, you know. So they are living in a house and they need they they need every shift because you would have a morning and an evening shift, sometimes even night shifts. There there should be two guides or yeah how would you call them supervisors that are like making sure the clients in that house are just doing their thing mm -hmm. living uh not attacking each other but just like behave like they should behave like a social work you know mm -hmm. yeah um and um so i had to be physically there mm -hmm. the, um, so uh, even though c was happening um I still had to go to work every day. Uh, mm -hmm. There were like no restrictions. I mean, I would have to wear a mask, obviously, but there were there were mm -hmm. no restrictions. More than that, I had to be physically there. So, mm -hmm. work-wise, it did it didn't affect me really. Um, no, that's good. Okay. Yeah. So that 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 was a really uh, positive thing for me. Um, yeah, and then sometimes it was tough because I couldn't couldn't do my my boxing, you know. I couldn't go to the gym. That was that was tough. But I think there were people that were suffering from it much more than uh, than I did. Yeah, it's true. But yeah. I was also struggling because I also went to the gym almost every day, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I had to stop and I have to show the um, the pass, yeah. you know, the Corona pass or ah, C yeah. pass. Um, yeah, that was really tough. Yeah, because. Yeah, I was getting a little bit depressed actually. Ah, yeah. yeah, that can happen. Yeah, and and yeah, doing workouts in your own house. Do you, was yeah, that I working tried. out for you? I tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I got a personal uh, coach uh, for I think two months because at the end I couldn't do it anymore, and she was actually really expensive. But I thought, okay, I really need to work out. So yeah. she had a gym at her house, and then it was okay. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good step. Yeah. That's a good choice you made yeah. there. 
I think, uh, yeah, d- like not being able to work out anymore, that really d- depresses people. I think that was the yeah. big biggest, well, socially it was also a big, big problem, obviously, but also like not being able to work out anymore was... I mean, there were a lot of gyms that would just put their machines outside, you know, yeah. just so they could just yeah. keep being open. So, yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you also said you traveled through South America. Yeah. How was that for you? Yeah, that was uh, was awesome. So there was also, um, yeah, I, I just finished my, my study and um, I, I was actually living with a good friend of mine uh in Rotterdam and he he was all into Spanish he all, he he also lived in Spain he spoke Spanish and he kind of yeah he uh he influenced me on 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 like creating this dream to go to South America so mm. uh during my study I already like fantasized about yeah when I'm done I'm going to South America and then you also had this series um uh narcos narcos oh um, yeah uh, yeah and that's w- when like those countries really caught my attention especially colombia i was like oh yeah that's awesome because for some reason i mean there's a reason i also ended up in a juvenile prison working there um i always get like for some reason sensation or like um sensation or let's say fighting you know it's it, it always is appealing to me for some for some reason okay and colombia yeah it was also for me like a, i saw it as a big challenge like mm. if you if you are able to live a life there yeah uh, in a third world country where pablo escobar was the <laughs> okay. was 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 yeah. was ruling there for a very long i was like okay yeah i, I should do that i see that i, I saw it as a beautiful challenge so yeah, and when I, wa- when I arrived there, I also just love the, the country and, and they actually speak very clear Spanish there. So it was a good country to, 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 do, to learn my first uh, words uh, and have my first conversations in Spanish. Um, yeah, and just like I stayed in Medellin, I lived there. Um, I bought a motorcycle. I, that was also like, uh, okay, I need a motorcycle. I want to ride a motorcycle in South America. That's the dream. Um, so I'm going for it at a motorcycle. So it was like 15 minutes away from a beautiful hike mm. because Medellin is actually like, it, it, it's located in a valley. So it's like surrounded by a lot of mountains. Wow. So like you had, a, yeah, you had beautiful hikes just 15 minutes away. So every week hiking, I think that's where I fell in love with hiking as well. And that's what I implement, what I've implemented in the, in the retreats I'm giving now. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, it was a beautiful experience. Also started dancing there, um, mm-hmm. which I'm also still doing. So yeah, it was just, uh, it was an amazing experience and, um, yeah. That same friend also came to visit me uh, at one point. So we also lived there for a couple of months together. Uh, And we are still, yeah, we, he was here, uh, I think two weeks ago. And then when we are together, we always start like bringing up those memories again, Mm. you know, and just like, it was an awesome time. So Mm. yeah, it was, it was great. Nice. And what is like the biggest lesson you learned through this trip? Hmm. My biggest lesson. Let's see. Mm, well, I think I figured out there that I, yeah, for some reason I found my ambition, you know. Um, I was surrounded by new people because I was living in, an, uh, in like an uh, B&B with, I think they had like six rooms. Um, and I would be seeing a lot of different people there. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people came and then they left again and they came and they left again. And um, some people also stayed there for a maximum of six months because that will be the maximum then your uh, f- uh, visa would be expired. So mm-hmm. um, I also made a good friends there and they had like a different perspective on life, you know. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot from those perspectives and I also found an amb- vision like okay i want to develop myself yeah mm-hmm. so i started reading a lot of books about personal development about psychology 
I wanted to work out. I w- uh, actually wanted to spend my time effectively because mm. before that I didn't have that ambition at all. You know, mm. it was just like, okay, I go to the gym because I want to look good. And then when I'm back, I just, yeah, watch TV and that's it. You know, mm. it's like I didn't really have like goals. And I think, yeah, I started to develop those goals because I was surrounded by, by new people, you know, with those, with, mm. the, with different mindsets. And I think there was, there was a huge, yeah, a huge shift in my in my own mindset. Mm, really that. good. So yeah. not only training your body, but also training your mind. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Reading, yeah. reading, 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 mm-hmm. and um, yeah, also started. I, I I got like a friend of mine, Max. He's called. Uh, he was from France. He he was into yoga a lot. You know, mm-hmm. So and I was I I never did a, <laughs> a yoga class before, but but yeah. he really like he was so excited about it. He did it every morning. And I got, he, yeah, it was contagious, you know? And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, now I want to do this too. <laughs> so I started doing <laughs> yoga. Uh, so it's, yeah, that, that's like a new world opened for me. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that, yeah, that, I think I can really recommend like living abroad because you, you just meet so many different people with such different perspectives on life. Here as well in mm-hmm. Spain, I also meeting a lot of people that are just so different than what yeah, I'm used to in true. the moment. Yeah. And it's like you first first you have like a well, let's say I I have like a a, a judgment right away, like how how do you how 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 are you thinking and, and why do you think like that? But then when I distance myself like okay, no, this is just a new perspective and you, you could learn mm. from this. That's uh yeah, that's just yeah, that's what I like from living living abroad. Mm. Besides all the hard stuff, because it's also very hard. Mm-hmm. Right? Going to another country, living in another country, I mean, it's also uh, it's also tough. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But how did you do that? Because she moved here with your girlfriend or she already lived here? Yeah, so she lived here already. She she's actually um uh, she was born in the Netherlands, but then she got raised in, in Spain. Okay. And then yeah. when she was 18, she moved back to uh, to Netherlands to study again. Then when I met her, she went back to Spain again because she liked it there more. Mm-hmm. Um, so she, yeah, she knows, she has her connections there, um, mm-hmm. her, her house. Uh, so I could just move in and that was, yeah, that was an oh, easy, nice. easy, mm-hmm. easy, easy, easy move. Um but that, that's, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, the only thing that's easy because other than that, it's just like, okay, learning mm-hmm. a new language, all right, a new culture, different weather, mm-hmm. uh, setting up a business uh, works way different than, than in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of things are also coming mm-hmm. on my path that are not just nice you know it's just nice to to go to another country it's just yeah like of course working yeah. hard yeah and what is like the biggest challenge for you starting a business mm, overcoming your uh, my 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 demons my dragons mm-hmm. yeah i i would call them um i also use it in in my retreat our retreat uh <laughs> where we use sorry uh, storytelling you know storytelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's always about like a hero, mm. and the hero needs uh, the, he he has a, a goal that he wants to achieve. Mm-hmm. It could be a, a princess that he needs to save, or uh, mm. it could be a treasure, or it could be like free freeing the the society from an enemy or whatever. Mm. And then he needs to defeat like enemies in order to reach that goal you know that's mm-hmm. that's the basic uh, principle of writing a story mm-hmm. um, so i would use those principles as well in um, in the retreat you know? so mm-hmm. yeah um, uh, facing your dragons so for me like setting up a business uh, is really like overcoming those those voices huh? in moments when uh, when i um, uh yeah have to deal with rejection mm-hmm. um thoughts like okay you you are not going to be able to do this or mm-hmm. this is a bad idea and like these things come in my mind and then yeah you have to as a as an entrepreneur you have to 
deal with that in a, in a, in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, for me, my biggest challenge, I think. Yeah. yeah. And how do you overcome that? It's just limiting beliefs? Talk. Mm-hmm. Talking about mm-hmm. it a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. With my girlfriend, with friends from mm-hmm. the Netherlands still, because I would be more comfortable speaking Dutch. Mm-hmm. Um, really speak about it, and then uh, yeah, they they would help me to um, relevate, relevate the situation. Is that a mm-hmm. good word in English? Um, make it make it. Uh, yeah, I know make, what you mean. Yeah, but y- you know <laughs> what I mean. But I hope the yeah. listeners also yeah. understand. What I mean. <laughs> Right. Relevate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a new invented word. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, and and working out, um, just keep doing the things that uh, give you confidence. You know, mm. like if you're not confident at one po- in, in one point, try to find the things that do give you confidence. Mm. And that's when you, yeah, for me, that's working out. For me, that's going to the gym. Boxing. I mean, I go to Rio Club Marbella. I don't know if you know that place. It's like a huge gym. Mm. You have everything. It's outdoor. You have rings. You can like like fighting rings. You can uh, do. Uh, you can do an ice bath there. Uh, oh, really interesting. Anything you you want. So that's like my second house. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I would okay. also bring clients there. You know, so mm-hmm. because yeah, it's it's just so huge that you can. Every time of the day, you can find like a, a very yeah quiet spot to mm-hmm. to, to 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 work with uh, with clients. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. And how does your program looks like? Because you have clients from the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, how does it goes? Um, so I will pick them up. Uh, they will get a first exercise from uh, at home always. So I would send mm-hmm. them an uh, exercise. Uh, which is all about reflection, reflection, reflection. Mm-hmm. So the idea of the retreat is that um, because in the Netherlands you would be like very busy all the time, you know, you have a lot of distractions, you have a lot of appointments with friends. Um, mm-hmm. uh, maybe you're living in the city, so like even if you're walking on the street, there's a lot of things going on. You have busy schedule. Um, um, birthdays you have to go to then you work deadlines you have to uh, to 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 achieve um so a lot of things going on on your mind and that makes or well that can result in that you yeah that you can get very stressed obviously burned out at one Mm. point um so the idea of the retreat is really that this is a a way of getting in touch with yourself again you know with Mm -hmm. your body um all the activities that are uh, being presented in the retreat are all about getting in touch with yourself again. Mm-hmm. So you would do hikes alone, yeah, because alone in nature just forces you to really, yeah, be be stuck mm-hmm. with yourself, you know. And uh, yeah. then, like, okay, what's happening inside now? And even though, because mo- nine out of ten times, like negative emotions or emotions that we don't want to mm-hmm. experience. They arise when you're alone. Yeah, yeah. The so, truth comes out. Yeah, and and you've been suppressing those emotions all the time, and that's mm-hmm. that. Those emotions come up when you are hiking. Same goes mm-hmm. for um, because another activity is we we go box boxing. Yeah? We do box coaching, also a way where you will be confronted with your with what you're feeling inside. Um, and then yoga as well. Mm-hmm. So we start off with yoga, hike, and then coaching done the other day same same yoga hiking and coaching and then you have a free evening in which you can like okay explore the city you get a, an exercise for reflection so you get a book and you just write down everything you uh, that yeah that come across in your mind and you just write it down and uh, that's your bible uh, for the the whole weekend and clients just some clients they they already they are used to write down their their thoughts and reflect, but some for some clients it's just totally new. It's like oh, I've never done this before. It's such a great tool, and mm-hmm. they they keep using it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's really a way to uh, yeah uh, to reset mm-hmm. and also set new goals for what what are you going to do differently when you go back to the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's also important to still do the same. 
you know to reflect and that kind of stuff absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah and then in the hustle and bustle from the netherlands you you yeah you might uh get yeah you might you might lose yourself in like old patterns obviously that would would happen a lot also mm-hmm. with the clients i had i mean i mean yeah it's just your environment also that can can have a lot of influence and yeah, it's difficult sure. it's difficult to stay out of there but it is not impossible i mean it's you cannot keep blaming your environment like oh yeah well we are living in a society where this is demanded from me so i have to live mm-hmm. this way uh, if you don't like it you can change it even though well mm-hmm. then well in the worst case you change your environment yourself right like yeah. we did actually yeah right <laughs> it's true yeah. but i think it's really important is that taking personal leadership uh, i think a lot of people stay in this victim mode do you also see that a lot yeah yeah yeah, yeah that happens happens a lot and i'm i'm also mm-hmm. guilty mm-hmm. yeah of me doing too that. Yeah, yeah. i was that before <laughs> you need to be aware of it yeah. you know that's yeah. that's very uh important so i could also uh, yeah be be like blaming other people from from my um yeah from the things i've done myself you know but also with with clients yeah you mm-hmm. and 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 that's that's the role of a coach you know make them um yeah make them aware of their um of their ways of escaping right mm-hmm. it's, it's actually a way of escaping and and don't face your own your own feelings your own dragons mm-hmm. yeah right but it, mm-hmm. i've learned in my coaching um uh study my coaching course that I uh, did, my teacher told me like when you are pointing at someone, there are always three fingers pointing at yourself. Mm. Right? So it's it's always about yourself. So keep, mm. let's 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 just um, yeah, <laughs> that's really confronting, but it's true. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is, it is. But I I, I really like I use that sentence a lot with mm. uh, with my clients. Yeah. yeah, in the end, it's always your problem. <laughs> yeah, or well, when you, when you have like two persons and and and. Uh, one is sending a message to the other person and let's let's say you have person a that's sending a message to person b it's always the responsibility of b of how you how you rea- react on that right yeah so it's sure. not like it's not the the, yeah. the responsibility of person a in that in that mm-hmm. sense right it's always your responsibility how do you deal with what mm-hmm. the other person is, is telling you mm-hmm. you d- you you don't have influence on that not yeah. direct influence yeah that's true and i think also you give the power away if you do that yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah absolutely and do you also have maybe examples from clients you help with their personal development um well for example uh two weeks ago uh we had a client that um was really struggling with um yeah making a choice you may people um they 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 need a coach when they are when they have to make a choice right mm-hmm. when they are like in this 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 uh how do you say this like an like a split mm-hmm. of a road where they they should go a or they they should go b they should go left or they should go right and either choice is just difficult like it has mm-hmm. its consequences and that's where people tend to like okay all right now i need a coach and now mm-hmm. i need because i i cannot make the choice myself and they maybe hope <laughs> the coach <laughs> will make the choice for them no but that's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah. um but a coach can help you to um yeah kind of like um yeah g- give you new perspectives on on, on a problem because mm-hmm. people are just like they're just like tunnel they have a tunnel vision and they they cannot see uh, the solution themselves and that's where a coach comes in so yeah she she was really struggling struggling like uh, do i need to stay with my with my boyfriend uh mm-hmm. or not because there were a lot of things going on um yeah and she was just uh yeah, really emotional uh, right from the from the start, mm. and that yeah, they would because if if a client comes to you, there are already a lot of emotions uh, involved, right? Yeah. I, I I I always advise people to like keep seeing a coach, even though you are just doing fine, you're having a good time, everything goes well. Just mm. keep seeing a coach to just like keep reflecting, like maintenance. Mm. Yeah, I've, mm. this week I've 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 posted uh posted something about that on Instagram. 
So you mm. see it as maintenance when you go to the dentist. You you're not waiting until your teeth fall out, right? Mm. You you want to just like keep going to see a coach to reflect on your emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so for for her it was just a really emotional ride, and for her it was really nice to um, yeah talk about about those emotions with someone that she didn't know yet. Um, she also was looking for a lot of confidence. Well, in the retreat, I cannot say a lot about that, but you also get challenged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you always, you also get like, it can also be tough, mm -hmm. but she overcame that challenge and that gave her, mm -hmm. that gave her a boost mm -hmm. uh, in confidence as well. And um, yeah, in the end, she, she left really, with a really good feeling. Right, she could see clearly again. That's good. Um, She's and, more aware. Yeah, and she yeah. had a good. She had a good plan. Like, okay, I'm going to the Netherlands. This, 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 and this. I'm committing to that. And um, yeah, it was beautiful four days. Uh, so it, it's wow. always beautiful. It's yeah. always beautiful. I mean, like there, there. I also see. Um, it can also be difficult because people find it difficult to confront themselves. You know, to see, to look at their their own their own things they have to mm -hmm. to clean up um, but once you get through that it's uh it's all it's actually always beautiful mm -hmm. yeah. and also going out of your comfort zone i think that's also really good yeah absolutely yeah. so most clients they they also say like okay yeah this is really out of my comfort zone i've never i've never gone on vacation alone all by myself yeah. you know yeah. that's new um Ah, I have to do this hike alone, really? Am I <laughs> going alone? Yes, you're going alone, yes. Yeah. And let's see what's happening then. Yeah. Are you able to, to find your way back or, or not? And how are you dealing with if it's really hot in the mountains mm -hmm. or if, you, yeah, if, you, if you, you can't find a way or, or even not being able to speak to an, uh, anyone else? You know? How do you deal with that? Um, a lot of st stuff to reflect on during the retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. And what is like the most common thing you see now, like with young adults or with young people in your retreats? Mm, well, really that they, um, I think that they, they need some time to, um, yeah, to, I would say rest almost. Um, also this, right? This thing keeps us busy all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, they also give me back like, a, oh, I like to not have a phone. So I would not say you're not allowed to use a phone during the retreat because during our retreat, you are allowed to use your phone. We just advise to put it on play mode as m much as possible. And, yeah, that, yeah. And, and, and when you advise us, cli clients do that. So. That's what I really want. And also just some, yeah, just some me time, you know, just some personal attention. Mm -hmm. Because that's, it's nice to, that you asked that because mm -hmm. attention, I think, is the biggest, um, is worth the most in this period of, uh, yeah, of our true. lives. Yeah. You know, giving yeah. like sincere, like attention to somebody. Yeah. Like listening, what is the other person saying? I mean, we are not doing that. No. We are not doing that. We are all caught up in our own, in our own lives and our own uh, uh, objectives that we need to achieve. That we invented ourselves. We we told ourselves, I need to achieve this. Um, and then yeah, you lose, you lose, you lose contact with, with with the people around you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, like having real attention for what someone is saying is, is mm. yeah, it doesn't, it, I, I don't say it's like extinguishing, but <laughs> it's, yeah, it's less and less common. Yeah. But it's true, like I always say also, like listening is the biggest compliment you can give to someone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But listening without judging, right? Yeah, that's also true, yeah. yeah. And also listening without uh, talking about your own experience after because people mm -hmm. tend to like, oh yeah, well that reminds me of uh, my vacation uh, when I went to Spain. Mm -hmm. There was also very interesting. They start talking about their own vacation mm -hmm. while you were just about to tell about your vacation, how your vacation was, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have this miscommunication already like, of, of people that are not 
feeling heard or not feeling mm. seen. Yeah. You no, know? and that's mm. I think that's a huge there's a huge demand for that. Like a lot of people maybe they don't realize it, but there are a lot mm. of people that uh yeah, that mm. are willing to pay for that. Yeah, for sure. And I also see a lot these days that people have burnouts, also mm-hmm. young people. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that's going on right now? Because of the, like, like what I said, the mm-hmm. objectives that people mm-hmm. invent themselves. You know? mm-hmm. So they see on social media, they see like these very successful <laughs> people and they would say like, okay, I need to achieve that as well. For me, for me, for example, I, I, I was also almost burned out when I was working mm-hmm. juvenile prison because I told myself that I, to be a man, I need to be able to do this work. I need to be able to be, I need to be capable of doing this work, yeah. right? So I would not like ask for help if I found something mm. uh, scary or difficult. Uh, so I would just be going lonely, 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 solo, solo, solo. Um, where in the end I would go back home some days like some days like miserably because i didn't feel i was doing a good good job i was working my ass off those 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 children they 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 didn't give me any signs of respect mm. and so i was like just getting drained um but i kept going you know because mm. i was like okay i need to i i, I am a man i want to show the world i'm a man yeah. i can do this yeah. uh and that's um yeah, that's where I almost got burned out. So it's like mm. you, 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 you set yourself a goal and you also have this limiting belief that you need to be able to do this alone and you don't need any help. And then you, don't, you, you stop communicating, so you stop talking, asking for help, and you just, you just go alone and you just, yeah, you, you go until you, you, you fall and, 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 and you don't stand up mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's the biggest reason, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah, just like individualism, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just causing us for yeah. But we we think that individual success equals um, uh, uh, pleasure. No, not pleasure. Um, being happy, happiness mm-hmm. yeah. equals happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, where I don't agree, I, th- that's not true. Mm-hmm. It's not true. But mm-hmm. it's, you can tell that to so many people, and people would say, yeah, that's, that's right. Mm-hmm. But it's, people would still go their own way and still go there. Well, I've set my goals. I'm going for those goals. I'm guilty of that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But what is sex- success now for you? Because you said being successful, everybody is ch- achieving that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or wants to achieve that. Um, what is now for you the definition of success? For me personally, I would say if I'm able to uh, uh, have like a business, um, my own business, where I um, have enough clients to 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 like earn enough money and to just yeah live my life while I am running this business you know mm-hmm. and um yeah that's for for everyone that's different obviously uh, but mm-hmm. for me i i have set this goal to make this company a success mm-hmm. so for me that's uh that's a success but it's actually like yeah it's a very difficult question it's a good question what is success for me because i i i tend to say like well if you are just living with your um yeah, with the people you love and um, you can just pay whatever you need, you know, just your food, your drinks, and you can go out sometimes and just do whatever you want. That should be enough. Yeah. That should be success, right? And that you are able to give this personal attention that, you, that we were talking about, that you are able to mm-hmm. give that to the people you love and also that you are able to receive that. In a, mm. yeah, in um, uh, yeah, enough. I think that should equal equal mm. uh, success as well. But mm. yeah, unfortunately, my my mind works differently. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> me too actually but i should be really happy what i have now because yeah. yeah it's always like this so actually you're already successful yeah well not, <laughs> the, not in my no not, not, not in my no because i still have like goals that i want to achieve within this company mm -hmm. and then yeah also um, have goals in in in, 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 in like hobby wise um so yeah, th yeah, you could say I'm successful. Mm -hmm. I think you, 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 this is a very good question you're asking mm -hmm. me right now. Yeah, okay. you got me, you got me, Perfect. you got me by my tail. I don't know <laughs> if that's an English expression. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, and um, but what is your goal then with Fuse? I really want um, to be with Fuse. I keep saying I, but it's my girlfriend and I. We want an um, an accessible platform for people to talk and work on their like emotional intelligence, you know, and that it's also uh, fun, interactive, uh, physical, um, but most importantly, accessible, mm -hmm. you know. So. Um, you can go to Fuse because you want to. You want some one-on-one -on -one attention. You want some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but we also offer like training programs to schools, but also to organizations to make sure uh, the the students or the coworkers they are they find a way to express what they are feeling, like mm -hmm. sincerely. You know, like the real feelings, not not the not the not the the mask they are putting on, but really. Yeah, giving people an environment where they f they feel safe to say what they're what they're really experiencing inside, mm -hmm. because that's that's when you start communicating like for real, mm -hmm. uh, and not mm -hmm. the fake communication that uh, we often see within organizations. Mm -hmm. Which is also one of the reasons why I'm uh, yeah I find it's difficult myself to 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 keep working in an in in a team you know in an organization because it's i always start yeah getting frustrated about the way people communicate with each other yeah and, and that they are not honest and yeah it just frustrates me yeah. so that's also one reason why uh, why mm -hmm. i started this yeah i think also the truth is really important for you absolutely yeah 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 yeah, the truth. The, uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. what what's happening here? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that that's what drives me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also if if I feel that I cannot, that you are not showing that 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 real person, the real person, the, yeah. the real insight. If you know what I mean, I cannot. I I feel right away I cannot connect with you, and that's yeah. Um, yeah, that that, that th those are things that frustrate me, and that that's what I like being a coach because if you, I I mean I can start coaching everyone everyone where mm. you know like my own friends, but a lot of people don't they don't want that right? They they're not waiting for someone to be to confront mm. you all the time. So it's no, of like course okay, not. well, <laughs> yeah. So you, yeah, kind of keep it in somewhere sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think that's really living in a spiritual way too. What do you mean by that? In a spiritual way, like um, you're talking about having a connection, I think more in a spiritual way also, like energy-wise. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you mm -hmm. could, you could, yeah. My girlfriend would be uh, better on, on this topic, like spiritual. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. I cannot really like, I always try to keep things, um, let, yeah, let's say practical. Practical, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's where my part is my part mm -hmm. is more practical my girlfriend is more like the spiritual strategy mm -hmm. uh, long-term vision um but you could talk better on that topic yeah but i think it's more like the feminine energy and the masculine energy could so be. yeah i think yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. perfect yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and how do you work together because you said your girlfriend is more spiritual and you're more action i guess um how does that look like well, so I would be more like uh, in uh, in the execution. So mm. I'm right now doing the the coaching and the training and uh, really doing the 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 real interaction with the clients. 
mm-hmm. and she's coming with ideas with um yeah setting the long term goals um helping me out w- when I'm like stuck in some creative process because that's not my strongest point uh, parts mm-hmm. um so yeah she she's really the create the the creative brain behind all this mm-hmm. um and I'm more, uh, but the idea is that 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 uh, at one point she 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 starts coaching as well and uh, doing all those mm. uh, things. Uh, but right now, this is a perfect combination. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. And you're coaching a lot of people, of course. And I think you get you give a lot of good advice. But what is the best advice you ever got? Mm. The best advice I've ever got. Mm. I have to think on on that one. I've received a lot of great advices in my life, mm-hmm. I think. Else I wouldn't be here. Um, yeah. No, I can't come up with, with something right now. Okay. I've received okay. a lot of... Uh, it's not that I'm like a person mm-hmm. that <laughs> doesn't need advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've I've gotten a lot of great advices, but I I can't come up with something right now. Okay, well maybe for later. Maybe for later. Okay. Yes. I was also really curious. Do you have like a morning or night routine you do? Uh yes. So in the morning, uh, I would um, uh, make sure the bed is all uh, clean and organized and ready mm. to ready for the night, obviously, uh, and then have a cold shower. And then uh, I'm doing intermittent fasting, okay. so I'm not uh, not eating then in the morning until uh, two p.m. Uh, it's a long period. Yeah, so it's from uh, from like uh, on the average, it would be from ten till two ten uh, p.m. Okay. Until two p.m. the the mm-hmm. other day, so it would okay. be like sixteen hours. Mm-hmm. And More then, Spanish uh, hours. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. in Holland it's from 12 right yeah so yeah. you well you could say uh, well, it doesn't really matter you know mm. you, uh, the, I'm, I think with imp- the most important thing is that you, you just have a big window in which you don't eat um, yeah and here in Spain we often have like dinner at around 9 or 10 so that will it's be really late yeah. yeah yeah what about you you're, you're eating Earlier, still uh, maintaining the Dutch. Well, uh, well, I'm trying because I go to the gym in the morning at like, like around to seven o'clock, mm-hmm. and I also have a personal trainer now. So sometimes I also train at the beach, and mm. after that, I'm so hungry, so I really need to eat something. But I eat something light, so I eat like a, a rice cracker with chicken or something, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So also with for the protein, you know, and yeah. then uh, yeah. If you want to grow muscle, yeah, you yeah. have to keep keep eating that i think every two hours um but um yeah for me i really started doing that because uh i was um it frustrated me that i was not able to function properly if i didn't eat for two hours straight Mm -hmm. Uh, well i knew that that was just like a mental thing going on so Mm -hmm. um for example when i would go out and i didn't bring food Mm-hmm. with me and i would stay out for like three four five hours straight yeah I, yeah at one point let's say i would be like going out with my girlfriend and i, I didn't have any food nearby mm-hmm. i would get like really like uh angry angry <laughs> that's the right <laughs> yeah. word yeah yeah not not really the the, the nicest person to be around no, with let's too. put it that way <laughs> Um, and I didn't like that, so that's yeah. That was the main reason why I started doing intermittent fasting mm-hmm. because it's a really, yeah. You you just you it just gives you um, a way of dealing with their hunger. Just you're just right now also like I, I feel that I'm hungry, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not. It doesn't influence my 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 mm-hmm. mood right now. That's good. Okay. So that's what I'm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not uh, having breakfast then. Um, and then I read uh, a Spanish book. Oh, really good. Yeah. Okay. I read a Spanish book. Um, and um, fiction. Um, el, el 
La, re la reina del dragón de oro. Something with the dragon. You know what it means? Yeah, something with dragon. The reign, the reign of the golden dragon. Okay. Um, yeah, I would never read a book like that, but it's a, <laughs> it's Spanish, uh, and um, yeah, it's 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 just to like learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To, to really practice. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's every that's mm -hmm. what I do every morning. That's mm -hmm. it, and then I start working. Mm -hmm. And then in the night, what do you do? Um, eating. Uh, watching uh, sometimes a series or or I read a book, and mm. I also read uh, often with my with my girlfriend together. Mm. So we have this uh, book of uh, Carl Jung. You know Carl Jung? Sounds familiar, but it's like a famous uh, psychologist. He um, you you first had uh, Freud, uh, Sigmund Freud, mm -hmm. and then he got followed up by his uh, student Carl Jung, and um, yeah, he was, he he came up with. Um, a lot of interesting uh, theories uh, in the psychology, um, mm. but we have a huge book, and we try to yeah to understand that book together because it's just mm. the way he writes is it's very difficult. So I w we would take one page or maybe two pages every night to to read together and figure wow. out what he is saying exactly. Well, it's beautiful that you can do this together. Yeah, it's, it's also, yeah. I can really uh, recommend doing that for like couples, you know, just mm -hmm. do, it may, for me it was weird at first, but yeah, you get used to it very quickly. Just read a book together and then yeah. especially such, a, do something that you both like, you know, like a topic that you mm -hmm. both like. Um, and, and, and just, uh, yeah, something that, um, because every page brings up a lot of like new information that you can start talking about you know it's like mm -hmm. discussing about maybe you agree on it maybe not and that's yeah uh, a lot of room for 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 yeah also figuring out and getting to know your your partner better mm -hmm. you know in a different level so yeah mm -hmm. i really recommend doing that that's really good yeah and do you also have other books that you can recommend um maybe for a starter <laughs> Yeah, so a really easy book is The Alchemist. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have it here. Yeah. You have it here? Yeah, yeah you've yeah. read it? Yeah. That's a good book for a starter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's that's also about the storytelling, right? About mm -hmm. like uh, someone that has a dream um, and is struggling with like, okay, I have a good life right now. It's mm -hmm. okay. Um, um, he's living in Andalusia as well, right? Yeah. It's, I don't it takes remember, place in actually. Andalusia in Spain, yeah. Oh, nice. But then he, he yeah, he, he finds out that he wants he wants more, he wants to explore the world. Mm, maybe not to say the clue. Hmm? <laughs> maybe not say the clue yet. No, 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 because it's just, otherwise uh, But it's just like it's just it. about every yeah. every story, you know, yeah. that like yeah. you you wanna explore uh, but you are also struggling with but I actually wanna stay in my, my comfort zone because it's so mm. yeah, it's easy and I don't mm. wanna have the suffering and and all that so mm -hmm. that's what the the whole book entails mm -hmm. yeah it's a really good one a really symbolic uh, way yeah. yeah um other books um for me also um but i forgot the the author um it's called um in dutch it's called Afwezige vaders, verloren zonen. So that would be like, um, uh, how would you translate that in English? Sorry? Afwezig. Afwezig. Uh, absent. Absent, yeah. absent fathers mm. and lost sons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Is it also about self-development or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. That was the first book that I read that was really like an eye-opener for me. Like, okay, I'm not alone with those feelings because mm. my, my, uh, I got raised by my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was like out of the picture for a very long time um, and that yeah that caused me to to have a lot of feelings of insecurity about like who, how is it to be a man you know what do you need to do mm -hmm. to to yeah um, manifest yourself um, yeah develop yourself uh, what choices should you make that are in line of being a man mm -hmm. um, so these were all feelings, feelings that I, yeah, that I was dealing uh, uh, with myself. And then when mm -hmm. I read that book, 
that really was for me like an eye opener. Like, all right, um, yeah, I'm not the only one. Mm. A lot of people uh, are suffering from this because he he writes down very like beautiful cases of people that mm. were also like yeah being raised without a, a father for oh, example. Oh wow! Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so that very was a nice. beautiful book. It's not really standard because everybody's saying think and grow rich, for example. Or I take it more rich personal, dead, maybe. Yeah, rich dad, poor dad, you know, it's like really... But this is really good, actually. You know, it's different because I think a lot of people say that like the standard books, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Everybody's saying rich dad, poor dad or think yeah. and grow rich, you know. Everybody knows these books. Yeah, I know them, but I haven't, yeah. uh, I haven't read them, um, to be honest. It's also a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. There's even a... a a film about it right now, right? Or or a yeah, TV show? Yeah, that's the, the secrets. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. read that by the way. The oh, okay. Secret. That's a book. It's right? a really I've good read one. That one. Also. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Think and Grow Rich is also a really difficult book. So maybe it's a good one to discuss with your girlfriends because uh-huh. every page you're like, oh really? What is this? Because it's also really old English. Uh-huh. So sometimes, for example, yeah, you have like pages that you think you read like 10 times mm-hmm. because you don't understand, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I mm-hmm. thought it was a more accessible um, mm-hmm. book. I didn't know that. Yeah, because it's also translated in Dutch, but then it's from Michael Pilarczyk. Mm-hmm. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen some uh, content yeah. of him. Yeah, so he's, he's translated Think and Grow Rich. Mm. In Dutch, so then it's better to understand. So after that, I was reading that one, and then I understand better. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Might be mm-hmm. trying that. Mm-hmm. Well, we first we we have a long way to go still with the uh, book of Carl Jung, uh, which is like this thick. I think I think it has like uh, five hundred pages. So wow. We still, <laughs> uh, yeah, still have a lot of to do. Yeah. And do you already know what your answer is for the other question? The best advice. You got. There we got it again. <laughs> like a boomerang. <laughs> I threw it away. It's coming back again. <laughs> okay, what is the best advice you can give to your younger self? Mm. Maybe that's easier. Well, that you don't need to do it alone. You know, you don't mm. need to show everyone that you are capable of achieving things um don't make it so hard for yourself it's not it's not necessary you know like Mm -hmm. you don't have to prove anything um if something feels good if you're comfortable in there just stick to it you know just and don't uh, don't feel tempted to all um yeah to all new things that 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 come by and and Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was so yeah i was so curious i also read this i i made this test during my 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 coaching course and um it would say that it gave me an advice like okay no that maybe that's that was one important advice which was not from a person actually which is uh, boring but from a from a test but it says Mm -hmm. Um, know that whenever you are uh, trying something or that you're doing something different than others, Mm -hmm. that it's a way of um, uh, avoiding that you are getting rejected. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's really deep. Yeah, yeah, I I understand, yeah. So because you you do something different, because you you are trying to like... uh, distinguish yourself from from the rest you're actually trying to Mm -hmm. yeah to protect yourself from from being rejected Mm -hmm. so that was for me also an eye open like okay yeah that's that's what i'm doing actually uh, not asking for help not asking for help and also just Mm -hmm. diving into new adventures all the time and diving into new adventures it's so familiar yeah (laughs) yeah true yeah but it is nice right you have this uh self-confrontatie matrix Mm -hmm. self-confrontation confrontation matrix from herbert hermans he's called i think and he says like you have like adventure and then on the other side of the axis you have um uh like uh, 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 being uh, like being comfort comfortable mm-hmm. in, in within your space right like the people you have around you that that are okay um 
against adventure and that people always like they they they're always fighting like okay should i go and and and, and, and discover new things or should i just stick to the to, to the being plan. comfortable and yeah. yeah i think i've until this age i've always like when i have always gone for the like the, the adventure but it's not mm. always positive you know mm. sometimes it's also running away from your problems exactly yeah exactly i was yeah. doing that a lot actually yeah before yeah yeah a lot of traveling and i'm from the north of Le- netherlands it's really boring there Mm-hmm. so yeah i was traveling a lot it's really nice but i was also running for myself i guess yeah 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 and mm-hmm. what you are running away from that's for everyone uh yeah different obviously mm-hmm. everyone has his has his uh, reasons to to run away but it, it yeah. is often uh yeah an excuse or a way of yeah running mm-hmm. away yeah, absolutely mm-hmm. for me yeah. too yeah i would like to wrap it up for now yes it, the time went so fast and i had a really nice conversation with you and uh where can people find you people can find me on fuse training and coaching instagram mm-hmm. um you can also find me on google fuse training and coaching um maybe it helps to put like malaga or spain um because you have a, you have many companies that are called fuse mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we we are based in Casares, which is like mm-hmm. uh, thirty minutes away from uh, Marbella. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's where mm-hmm. we we are found. We are also on TikTok, um, few training and coaching. Beautiful. Yes. And before we end the podcast, I always ask my guests, uh, do you have some final words to say to the audience or knowledge? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. We we've talked about that, but. Um, I think, and that's also the core of our business. I find it, we find it very important that um, people give some personal attention to other mm. people, you know, like just, and personal. So during my course, I learned to listen on different levels. You know, you can listen while you are like reflecting your own personal stuff on everything that, that that's being said. But you can also mm-hmm. listen while you are just putting all that away and you're just there for the other person. Mm-hmm. And if one person just has one person in his life that's doing that, he will be mentally okay. He will be emotionally okay. He will be or she will be in balance. Right, mm-hmm. you just need one person. So try to be that person uh, for for someone. You know, listen, mm. listen. Really good. Yes. Really nice ending. Well, thank you so much for coming. Yes, it was and a pleasure. Thank, yes, thank you everyone for listening, and I see you in the next one.